into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Verse 25, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest enter into the holy place every year with blood of others. Verse 26, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Verse 27, and as it is appointed unto man, to men once to die, but after this judgment. Y'all see where it come from now, don't you? Huh? <laughs> okay. So, so, uh, so Christ, verse 28, was once offered to bear the sins of many. That's his first appearance. And, to, um, and unto them that look for him, mm-hmm, shall he appear the second time without sin. Sin, is, that means you have come through yourself, your error thinking, and to a transition of who you really are, who we all are, through it uh, unto salvation, which is at this point you have returned in your mind, in your soul, you have returned your soul back to God uh, so that now God can have use of your soul, your soul can twin him. And so he's cleared out the error so you can walk in truth. Mm -hmm. And one world got the end so another one can start. Mm -hmm. So the topic of our conversation is the end of the world. We're not talking about the three-dimensional that we see. World, that means cosmos. It means the orderly arrangement of authority, of power, ability, or influence. You've switched the order in your own cosmos. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The end of the world. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you and we honor you. We thank you for a time such as this, walking in the spirit of God so that we don't fulfill the lust, the desires of our humanity, God, but that we begin to walk and live in the presence of who you are and what you have said regarding us. We thank you for this word, God. We thank you, God, that it resonate, God, that we grab hope to it and use it to help cut off the add-on on the extra that we have taken on in our mind that causes us to walk in error or to walk away or to wander in life. We bless you and we honor you in this place. In Christ's name, let everybody say amen. amen. The end of the world, the end of the world, the orderly arrangement of authority, and we'll get to that in, in a minute. In this text, in this text, uh, 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 it's, it talks about Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 9, I'm going to go up and down Hebrews back to the, um, use some of the, the beginning of Hebrews and everything, but, but Christ did not enter, and this is what the text is, is, is telling us. He didn't enter into the holy places made with hands, which are figures, meaning this text is saying that he, he didn't go in to the temples of God that was going, the church that was going on as usual at that particular time. He didn't go in there to do anything concerning God. That's what the text is saying. He, did, he, didn't, go, he didn't go in there to, to do anything. He said Christ did not enter the copy uh, of the true holy place made with hands. Oh, my goodness. What, what man made, the scriptures declare they were figures. In, in, in Hebrews chapter 24, figures are thing formed after a pattern or an outline or a representative. Pick up the pattern so that you can uh, detach away from them. Verse 1 of this text, the temple, it explains the dynamics of the temple that the, in the Bible calls it the worldly sanctuary. Verse 1, the temple in the, in the, in the first covenant had ordinances. It, it had rules of divine services. This is how we picked up and, and when I was little, our program used to say what? An order of service. It, oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. So. The first covenant had rules and, and, and an ordinance of divine service, meaning an order of service, and a worldly sanctuary, meaning made with hands. But this sanctuary here means mindsets or thoughts 
formed through the belief in the reality of the external, the outer appearance of God, the standard of living that we were separated from God and we will see him again when we die. Uh, verse 2, a tabernacle, meaning a sacred or uh, holy tent was put up. The outer one, look at, listen at how the, the, the order of service, the outer one, uh, the first section in which was a lampstand and the table with loaves of sacred showbread. This is called the holy place. Behind the second one was a veil there was another tabernacle called the inner, known as the holies of holies. Verse 4 say, in that having the golden altar of incense and the ark of the covenant covered entirely with gold. This contained a golden jar which held the manna and the rod of Aaron that sprouted in the tablets of the covenant inscribed with the Ten Commandments, meaning sitting right there uh, uh, in, in, in what considered to be the holy place was the Ten Commandments made written on stone. In other words, this worldly tabernacle, come on here somebody, this had, our, our heart was placed on ice. It was cold, it was hard, why? Because we were having to follow after the, world, the worldly pattern. Mm -hmm. And when you go in there and everybody didn't get the seat back there, what was sitting on the seat that caught was, was, was a something written on stone that caused us to become hard and callous. I just listed. No, no, no. Let me, let me finish. So verse 5. And above the ark were the golden cherubim, the angels, figures of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. So, so in this text, you will have a priest that goes in, go in, you, the people could come to the outer court, so, so, but only the, the high priest, the priest will go in the inner court, and the high priest will go into the holies of holy, meaning we will have to stand out there and hope and pray that he even be pulled back out, and he's going on our behalf to what? To go see God. But was he seeing the true and living God with the Ten Commandments on the seat? That's all right. The text declares that God, Christ, did not enter the pattern himself at the figures, what was made with hands, the physical. The text boldly states that he entered into heaven itself, a function word to indicate entry or uh, introduction, that word into, meaning an, an, an introduction to a new mindset, new thoughts in which the soul and the body, the center of who we are, the sanctuary, are in covenant with the divine mind, not to appear in the, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf, which that mindset has to be developed to as uh, 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 in, in the presence of me, you walking in the authority uh, uh, of, of, um, of God. He, he said, I'm gonna go there first. Amen. So that he patterned himself after God. He entered heaven to restore our likeness and image we are created in. So, so here's, here's what he did. He says, I'm going to go into a spiritual place. I'm going in this spiritual place in my what? In my body. That's the reason why it was beaten to, uh, 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 it was beaten uh, uh, in subjection. That's the reason why he stood there on the cross and he took everything because he saw what was ahead out of him that he no longer had to even though he never did but he became sin on our behalf so that we so that we could see the pattern how to get back to the true and living God and so he stood there on the cross and he took a beating he allowed people to say the different things because when you're on the cross in your own life, that's not a pretty look. That's the reason why it described, it was a metaphor so as to how your life was going to look while you're transforming. And what we try to do, we keep trying to, try to uh, save our life to save face before people. But, how, but the reason is why? Because if they ever want to do something for God, the true and living God, they got to take the same route. Yeah. If they don't understand it, I, I'm, I'm, and because you eat, you eating off your money, you you living in a house off your money, you driving a car off your money. Why is people so important? So Jesus patterned himself 
after God. He didn't go after the figures. He let them have their figure. The, the, the same people that, that continue to have church. Why? Because of self-righteousness. Why? Because you, you, you didn't come down here because I'm so anointed and you're going to get them back for what they did to me. No, ma'am. God is about his plan. He said, I sent my son to show y'all how to handle my business. So he says, I'm going to pattern myself after God so you can pattern yourself after God. And I'm going to go to this place. Why? And I'm going to be in the presence of God for you. Verse 19 says, for through the law I died to the law. And it's the, this is Galatians chapter 2, verse 19 that people always talked about. Everything is not literal in the Bible. So when he's saying, die, you die into a knowledge. You die, he said, in, in Galatians chapter 2. Verse 19 through 21 says, For the law, through the law I died to the law, and its demands on me because of salvation is provided through the death and resurrection of Christ so that I might what? Wake up to God. See, we were told coming up that you got to die to get to God, and they was thinking physical. Why? Because their tabernacle was physical. They, what, the, the priest went in there. We don't know what the priest was doing in there. And the fact that they had the Ten Commandments in the seat kept us shut out. And they, he didn't go in there for transformation of mind. He went in there for forgiveness of sin. And if, you, if, if, if all you gonna, can do is keep forgiving my sin, all that do is keep reminding me of the sin. That's the reason why I said this morning, most of us in here, we're not even walking with the ever-presence God, ever-present God. We're walking off from memory. I remember when X, Y, Z, I remember when X, Y, Z, and you pull from that place, and you, but you're not in 2024, you in 1967, I saw that number, you in 1972, you in 1980, you, you stop living where it happened at. So then I saw, I went to figures. See, I got this car, God bless me. I got this house, God bless me. I got married, he blessed me. I got this wig, he blessed me. Everything in the Bible clearly states that Jesus never entertained anything made with man's hand. But Paul says in Galatians, I had to die, I had to give up the law, the knowledge. Why? And it's demands on me. Why? Because of salvation. Meaning that was another version of me that was sitting there waiting on me to arrive. To it. And I had to wake up. The Christ went through the death, burial, and resurrection so that I can live, so that I can wake up to God, so that I have been, and this right here is my I live message. I have been crucified with Christ. I war in me to kill off thoughts that no longer serve me. It's no longer I who live, but the Christ in me that lives. And if I live in Christ, and Christ went right directly into heaven, where am I? That's all right, y'all quiet. The life I live now in the body, in the sanctuary, I live by faith, what God said, the, what the, the covenant he's written in me, in the Son of God, who loved me and gave up his life for me. So my question is, are you living in the world of figures or in heaven itself? The pattern, here's the pattern. Matthew verse 20, chapter 27, verse 50 through 53. So Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice on the cross, he yielded up the ghost, meaning he surrendered his spirit and his mind. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent. And the reason why some of us are where we are and continue in, we haven't torn down what needs to be torn down so your new self can be erected. He says, you know, if you're yelling, you know it's agony. If you're yelling, you know it's painful. If you're giving up, he said, I released. I beheld the veil, and it's, the sound was so loud that the veil of the temple was rent. And twain, meaning two, from top to bottom in the earth did quake, meaning shook. And the rocks rent, meaning split apart, meaning you're going to have some turbulence. In your life, 
This is why people don't preach this, because this ain't popular. But if I tell you microwave, y'all better start thinking, because here's the thing, why are you getting up? If you can go to a preacher that can pour something on you, or lay their hands over you, or say specific words over you, why are you coming here fighting for yourself? If all I got to do is go to a preacher, get him some money, and I walk out of here fine. Yeah, you walked out of here hyped up, and your feelings locked down for a second. But when you hit that door, it's caught in where that seed land and where, where your soil is. Some, the enemy, your, your inner thoughts come and grab that feeling immediately that you, that you walk out of here. The, uh, 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 you, you, you land in a place that, that don't even have the correct soil to cause it to grow up. Come on here, somebody. But listen what happened. Not only did he yield up the ghost, I mean, he surrendered his mind, and things began to, that thing that held him captive in his mind began to be open, began to expand. Verse 22 said, the graves was open. Come on here, somebody. And many bodies of the saints slept or rose. Come on here, somebody. So when he went through what he went through, he made a way of escape for us inside of ourselves. Meaning, meaning the, the graves open up and release you yeah, yeah. that ain't talking about when we die that's talking about the law yeah. had a grip on us held us captive yeah. not allowing us to see ourselves as we should yeah. hmm this Matthew chapter 27 verse 52 53 the graves were open this this is when he was on the cross this ain't no end of no world as we know it this, 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 the scripture says this happened when he was on the cross. It said the graves were open and many bodies of the saints, those. See, that's, I'm telling you something about that word saint. That, that means set aside, that means sacred. Those that were set aside for God use. Because the scripture said in the New Testament, what? He calls us out of darkness into the light. He calls us out of, so that word saint there means the saints, those that were asleep. Because it's some still in darkness. Those that were in graves, locked down to the law. He called, what he did when he tore the veil, rent the veil, the graves were open in the bodies of the saints that slept yeah. or rose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, y'all gonna get it after a while. Saints are hagios, those that has been separated and called by God out of light, out of darkness, into the light. The graves is open for you. Nothing can contain you. Nothing can hold you down. Verse 23, and came out of the graves after his resurrection. Does that sound like this physical world folding? And came out of the grave after his resurrection. Yeah. And went into the holy city and appeared unto many. That's not when we die. So it can't be talking about when this world fold up because I need some representation. I need some images. I need my likeness and image to be seen in this earth realm. Yeah. The pattern. Go through the agony. The agony. Because the grave is open. But you can't see it because you have what? Detach yourself. Still living in 1967, still mad, still angry, still depressed, still sad, still defeated, still trying to show people who you are, still doing the things that you're doing. Why? Because you really don't know who you are. Because there's no way that sound had to be great for a grave to come over. That sound had to be loud for a grave to come over. That sound had to be powerful. It loose something by the sound. Christ didn't enter what man had going on. That's the reason why they was following him around. You ain't right, you ain't it. Why? Because you didn't come to do what I thought you were going to do. God got his own thing going on. So he didn't even enter what they had going on. He went to free us, free those saints 
that was locked down that God was going to call out. That means handpicked. Not about you, you of the vessel. Not about you, the purpose that's locked away on the inside of you. We were made from dust, from dirt. Verse 25, nor yet that, that uh, he should offer himself often as the high priest enter into the holy place over and over. In other words, the, er the earthly tabernacle, tabernacle, going back to verse 6, chapter 9, the priest continually entered the holy, the outer, or the first section of the tabernacle, the holy place, performing their rituals, their ritual acts of divine worship. Uh-huh, so we have this order of service, and we are not going to break this order of service. Come on here, somebody. We're going to start at the top, and we're going to end at the bottom, and we're going to do this thing uh, uh, over and over. It's just going to be a continual, continually way of life. Pass out that order of service, Usher, and this is what we're going to do, and we are not going to break away from it. Oh, my God. So verse 7, the second, the inner tabernacle of the holies, of holies on the, the high priest in it there once a year, bringing a sacrifice of blood, which he offers as a substitutionary atonement for himself and for the sins of the people. Oh, my God, aren't you glad that when he went through what he went through on the cross and he yielded up his mind and his spirit to be used to be returned back to God, graves come open, and I no longer have to have Pastor Prather to be doing nothing on my behalf. What I got to do is enter into my tent sanctuary that's not made by man's hands and know what has been placed on the inside of me. I don't need nobody going in there and coming out. I don't know what you're doing in there. We don't have to do that no more, Porsche. Mm -hmm. We no longer have anyone going to God on our head behalf. Christ has taken care of that. So all the figures can die and we can go to God for ourselves. We don't need these figures anymore. I don't need that order of service anymore. Oh, my God. This verse says Christ did not enter into the heavenly sanctuary to offer himself over and over again to pattern himself after what was already going on as the high priest did entering the holy place every year with the blood that was not his own. The animal blood gave us for forgiveness of sin. But verse 14 in chapter 9 say, uh, states the blood of Christ who through the eternal Holy Spirit offered himself a blemish without sin to what? To cleanse your consciousness. The Bible says that. To what? To clean your consciousness. So that means that I have something on my consciousness that needs to be taken off. Yeah. That the order of service couldn't do. Check it out. It kept you in repetitive motion. It kept you going round and round in a circle of motion. Keep the same patterns over and over. I'm having to manufacture the Holy Spirit working. So, so if the angels didn't do it, I start hucking and bucking and falling out. And lo, my God, and then don't let me come down with my anointed self because I'm the only one anointed in y'all. Y'all just have to come and I'm going to entertain y'all because I'm the only one got it. And don't let me, y'all better be glad I can't sing. They'll be saying, I'm sure enough for Norton. Do y'all get that he changed the order of service? We ain't got to repeat this stuff no more. Uh-huh, all this stuff, all this furniture, these figures that you better not touch, label sacred. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Ooh, I'm y'all pastor, so if I get in trouble, they gonna come for y'all. <laughs> so verse 14 say Christ's blood. He didn't have to do that repetitive stuff. He didn't have to keep you on memory. He didn't come to keep us on memory, to keep reminding us how cold we are. Because that, that stone, when you made of stone, when your heart is on stone or it's cold, it's on ice, on ice you nice nasty. It's according to who's around that, that uh, uh, you do what, what you do. If Pastor Ryan blessed and holler favor. Another situation. You...
you, you don't know who you, y'all. He's saying, I'm, a, I'm clearing up the faces. I'm clearing up the faces. I just need you stuck at me. You no longer have to keep these faces in every place that you go in. If you go to represent me and be authentic, you're going to have the same place at church, at work, at home, at Walmart, at the walk and try and traveling to Jamaica where nobody can see you. Oh! Change that thing. Change the order of service. No more pretending I like may like it. No longer said giving praise and hoping that the priest went in there and did what he said. No longer have to depend on that he actually did what he said he did it. Oh my God. God, Christ's blood. My God, the scripture says, came to cleanse the consciousness. That's the remission of sin. When you take the treatment, when you take the treatment, when you go on the cross, when you stand there and you, uh, you allow the, the thorns to, uh, 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 to be put on your head, when you allow your body to be beat in, in, in subjection, when you allow your mind to go through, to, to, through the mental agony of coming through and you get around safe people. It's safe. I didn't say save. I said safe. You get around safe people that understand what's going on and say, I'm coming through myself. I need you to cover me because we all know this going to get ugly. But what amazes me, we ain't like it ain't going to get ugly. He stood up there until he hollered. Who coming through yourself when you fight the voice of your mother, when you fight the echoes, when you're fighting. That's the reason why what was the order of service in the Old Testament wasn't going to bring us out. And he had this new order that's going to bring us through ourselves and understood the fact that they going to fall, they going to get up, they going to fall down, they going to get up because they are trying to get to me. Yeah. My God, cleanse your consciousness my God, listen at this. This is uh, uh, chapter 9, verse 14. He says that Christ's blood was put in place to cleanse our consciousness from dead works. Oh, my God. And lifeless observance, practices to serve the living God. I'm detaching you from one because that wasn't me. It was put there to hold you in place. And, to, and, and, and it prophesied the entire time in the Old Testament that the Messiah was coming. The Messiah was coming. And, and he says, I sent my son to clean off your consciousness. Why? Why? So you can give up dead work. So you can what? Put that order of service to, uh, 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 away. So what? You can put these tables and these figures that you have in the temple nothing wrong with the table but don't call them sacred to give up this scripture I'm going to keep saying the Hebrew Hebrew, because they be watching Hebrews 9 14 read that Mm -hmm. this ain't no ticket nowhere this is a cleansing and a washing this is a renewal so that God can occupy this temple, so that God can use my, my, my thoughts, my soul can image the thoughts, and, and I use my feet, my hand, and my eyes in this body to get it done. I use my mouth to confess it out my mouth to come in agreement because what's coming out your mouth is what you're in agreement with in your heart. And if what's coming out your mouth is dead words, no judge, judgment or condemnation, you need to clean off. Your consciousness was somebody say in the world already. Y'all scared? Y'all, come on, Portia, say it with me. In the world already. Verse 26. For here's the pattern. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, meaning this, that Christ is going to have to stay on that cross and continue to repeat the pattern of suffering. My God, Christ don't, do not uh, have to enter into heavenly sanctuary to offer himself again and again. So my question is, why are we? Ooh. So here's the pattern. He would have to suffer over and over since the foundation of the world, but now once for, once for all the consummation 
of the ages, meaning the action that he took is a consummation, meaning the action of making a marriage or relationship complete by having sexual intercourse. So what this text is saying, Christ brought us into oneness with God from this point forward. He has appeared and been publicly manifest to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself to what? To end the world. Here's the pattern. The reason we continue to suffer is we're trying to live, number one, in both covenants, and, 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 and we're trying to be in between. And some are still living in the what? The first covenant. Why? Because it's still being taught. And that's causing confusion in our world. What is our world? Our world is the orderly arrangement of government, of, of influence. That's the reason why you don't hear me uh, uh, fighting with, with, about politicians and all that stuff. Why? If you're a part of that world, you go ahead. You're a part of that system, then you, you depend on that system. But here's the thing. I depend on the system that dwells on the inside of me. I'm not depending on me because I figured out a long time ago working in government, they actually use, using your money to tell you what you can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. The reason we keep suffering because we trying to live in both covenants or we still are we living in the in the first covenant because in the first covenant suffering suffering was honorable. Yeah. Oh, oh my. Yeah. Oh, my, I'm going to walk back here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> suffering was honorable. Mm -hmm. you, you suffering, that meant you going through a mental anguish. Why? Because your mind has a, has, is used to thinking a certain way. And why does your body have to be beat into subjection? Because your body is used to craving and desiring what your, what your, the thoughts that your mind has. So you really don't have no, we don't have any control over the vessel. Only, only we have whoever influencing the vessel is, is the one that has control of our thoughts and the one that has control of our body. So, so you're going to have to give up control. Why? Because it's some thoughts in there that keeps your desire or uh, 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 function going in place. It's just like them oatmeal pies. When I think about an oatmeal pie, I visually see the pie. I see the cream when I smash the pie and it comes out. I see myself licking the cream. Why? And I don't have a pie in my mouth, but I can taste that cream. Oh, yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Mm -hmm. So we're all over the place trying to figure this out. We were taught this means the physical world is ending. World in Hebrew means cosmos, K-O-S-M-O-S. It means orderly or hum uh, harmonious arrangement or constitution means structure or government, meaning authority. Side note, did you know that cosmos, C-O-S-M-O-S, means the universe or orderly, harmonious, systematic universe? It's the same meaning. And people say universe ain't in the Bible. Because that first system is interested in being right. When you will sit there and let a man, because it's what it's the order of service of the whole, sit there on the Sabbath and be sick and can't be healed because you sit, you trying to keep an order of service that don't even allow for healing because it ain't even about us. It's about you being right. And as long as, see, I'm telling you something about that first system. It, it's, it's like you got the knowledge now and it's about you being, it's about you being right. It's, it's self-righteousness. It's not about what God got going on. So the cosmos, the word heap, you got to look these words up because they don't mean the same. So when it this world right here in Hebrew means cosmos. It means your harmonious arrangement. Who's influencing is in, in charge of your cosmos, of your world. Side note, did you know, I'm going to say it again, that cosmos means universe. The C-O-M-O-S, C-O-S-M-O-S. So uh, Isaiah prophesied about this cosmos that was coming. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. And we shout about it and, and we and, and honey, and don't let Christmas come around. See, it's, it's what the first covenant is what's the benefit for me. Because the truth of the matter is my life is centered around me. 
self-centeredness. So, so when Christmas come around, they'll say, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government, spiritual authority, shall be upon his shoulder, responsibility and power, and his name, authority, rightful power and dominion, shall be called wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, and the prince of peace. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They get you to send the dogs money at Christmas time. They have that music going on. They don't lost the eye and a leg. And they even they come out. And to us, a child was born. They had the animals up there. You got to send them money. Everybody, they use the scripture. That's a, a form of manipulation. That's the reason why I got you reading that book. Why? Because it talks about two leaders. You either manipulating people to do what you want them to do, or you inspiring them. Oh! Yeah. Come on. Uh-huh. What's that, D? D say, I finally got it. I got to tell Pruitt, but he did it when Pruitt went here. He said a new cosmos, a new world was coming. He said a son was going to be born. And to this son, the government shall be on his shoulder. He was going to carry the weight of it. So when are we going to change to it? Verse 7 of Isaiah chapter 9 says, when he talks about call out the name, the authority of it, verse 7, of the increase of his government, it says it again, and peace. So why you ain't got no peace? Because your world, who's running the, the son that was born, is he running the world? There shall be no end. Uh, to, uh, uh, this government and peace, there shall be no end, the scripture says. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to what? To order it. To what? To establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth forever and ever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So you see, see the difference in that first one is what you did. The difference in the second covenant is what he did on your behalf. And our problem is, is we don't know how to accept nothing. We feel like we got to give. Why? Because that old system used us up. That old system ran us. That old system prostituted us. That old system used us and we didn't even get the money from it. That's all right. That's all right. I'm going home. They're going to come to y'all. They'll never come to me. This government. No end. Who God, I don't think I need to do is end that first world. Uh huh. We need to follow the pattern of Jesus to the cross to have that experience of warring with our flesh and allowing our body to be beat into, into submission. Why? Into regeneration. To clear up the confusion, the double mind, and to live from the kingdom of God that cannot be seen in our phys- by our physical eye. Why? Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27 declares the mystery, meaning the unknown, the unseen, uh, that has been hidden from ages, from ages. For years, it's been hidden and from generations. See, they'll tell you that God don't change. But I, I beg the difference. Why? Because if you tell me something been hidden, that means God knew it all the while. We just didn't know it. And see, and that's the reason why we need to understand this, that we, are, we, don't, we don't discount our, our older heads. We don't discount what, they, what our people did in slavery because we stand on their what? On their shoulders. And so, and so and, and, and we, can read, we can read. We don't have to go off of what they tell us because now we have learned to read. So now we understand some things that didn't happen. God, God knew that it wasn't going to happen, and he chose the, for the appointed time as to when it was going to happen. And so the scripture says that, that the mystery, the unknown, was hidden from, for, uh, from ages and from generations. is now made manifest to his what? To his saints. There go that word again. I open up the grave for my saints, and I'm going to reveal the mystery to what? To my saints, to the ones that has been called called out of darkness into this marvelous light to the one that I chose to create to build my church oh my god so you want to be a saint but you better make sure the definition is right 
he specifically said the saints, the grave will open to the saints. Said that he specifically said the mystery, the unknown, is given to the who? My, I just feel like, who? Portia, who? That thing should be waking up something in y'all. It's like, man, break it off. I'm going to fall right in front of everybody because I can see the end. You better get Jesus' attitude. I ain't saving myself no more because all I do is keep going to the order of service and keep repeating, keep doing the same thing over and over. I'm getting ready to pray protocol. Anybody in this place, he opened my grave. He called me out. And what he's telling me, he ain't telling you. Oh, my God. My God. Woo. Lift your hands and tell God thank you. Lift your hands and give God some praise. Do I have any saints in this place? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. In the world already. In the world already. I'm, I got to get through this. My God. In the world already. Verse 27 of Colossians chapter 1. The saints are the ones God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you. So y'all can have the cars, y'all can have the houses, y'all can have the land, y'all can have the degree. I want Christ in me. That's what you would never know. You'll keep me saying, keep being on Facebook. Look, I wish I had a picture of a car. This is my, this is my car. Look what the God has blessed me with. Come on, order of service. I'm going to break protocol. Y'all can't see it, but look what God has blessed me with. The Christ, the spirit man dwells in this temple. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me, let me break it down. Because this verse what? Uh-huh, verse 26. He says, he no longer have to keep going and repeat it, being repeated, or the order of service. No, we can't, we can't break the order of service. We can't let God do nothing. We're going to follow what has been written down on this paper. No, nah, no. Nah. We're we going to follow God. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So, so, I don't went all the way back trying to see where I was. So, so, here's the thing. So, if Christ in me, the Bible says, verse 27, Christ is the hope of glory. Glory, that means doxa, D-O-X-A. It means the mind of God. Galatians chapter 4 verse 19 says Christ has to be formed. Christ has to appear in you. Why? So that when we awaken to our sleep, awaken out of our sleep or our death, we be awakened in heavenly places. Why can't, uh, 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 what can't be seen with your natural sight? This is the world that Solomon talked about in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 that inside man there's a world that man, man and have no idea exist. But here's my prayer for you today and for us today because it, the Bible clearly states that I ain't got to be looking up in no sky for God. What it talks about is metaphorically. He's talking about breaking the cloudiness that's in our soul, the fogginess, that because the Bible says, what about the law? It was a shadow of things to come. It means it was an outline. It didn't give a clear picture. It was smoke. It, it, it distorted 
study our view. And so, so this what I love right here, the scripture that said, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the what? The heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that what? That love him. This new covenant is written in the new sanctuary of God, the body that don't include the law and all its figures. Nothing made with man's hands is in us. And our job is what? To develop it. As a matter of fact, Genesis chapter 2 declares God made the vessel to house him from the dust of the ground. So man can't even take responsibility for the vessel because he says, let me make man, let me pull up dust particles and put this together and then release myself in it. Verse 27. And it is appointed. Oh, here come the funeral. And it is appointed until men wants to die. But after that, the judgment. Uh huh. You have been appointed. You ha- we all have an appointment with death. Reservations are waiting. Not referring to gender death, to man, but to human race. Specifically for those who have been called out of darkness, the saints, into the marvelous lights. Those saints that have been set aside for God's use. So, so the scripture says in verse 27, you've been appointed to die. Die here means, and, and, it, and it tells us in the scripture, for it's through the law I died. I read that earlier. The law, is, I, was, I was asleep and unconscious to my true identity. But the truth of the matter is, death came or sleep came or the authority came or that trance came when God put Adam to sleep and he, and he took that rib out of him and he curved. Rib means to curve. mean he turned our perception down to our humanity and the scripture say he closed it up with what? With flesh. And then you never hear anything about Adam being waking back up until you start hearing about the Messiah is coming. Wake out your sleep. Wake up out your sleep, old sleeping man. Wake up out your sleep in the New Testament why because it's a shaking the earth is about to shake why because I'm getting ready to release you I have already released you from your prison I just need you to wake up to where we are Colossians chapter 3 verse 3 through 5 you died to this world and your new your real life is hidden what in Christ in God so when you wake up to the Christ consciousness in you and he has already walked into heaven where you waking up to mm-hmm. so uh, so verse 4 say when Christ who is our life appears then you will appear with him in what in glory there's that word again doxy in the mind of God so put the death and deprive of power the evil the working of thoughts that's absent of spirit Mm -hmm. longings of your earthly body here it is self-centered desire stored up in the temple which is immorality impurity sinful passion evil desires and greed which is a kind of idolatry put your your gadgets away false worship because it replaces your commitment to God got a question for you how are we going to be judged by God for our sin if Jesus blood wiped it away he wiped our consciousness clean. Why, why he never, why in this text? Because they always say our behavior is the sin. Why in the text did he not say behavior? Why did he say conscious? I'm just asking for a friend. Well, I'm asking for Keisha. What, why? Why? I'm just, I, I just did it because I said I was asking for a friend. Uh, I'm asking y'all. Why, why are we still being, because if, if it's like that, there's, people are still functioning in the old covenant, and the Bible, Galatians says that, that if you're still being read the law, whoever is reading the law, the veil is over their face. They don't even know it's still hidden from them. I'm going to move right along. Through Christ comes correct knowledge and truth. Judgment, see, we've taken these words, and we haven't looked them up. And I get it because we were told what they were. And what we did, we just passed it down. But judgment means, us, in this case, a separating, a sundering, meaning a severing, a removing, a detaching can, can take place. So if I die 
to, to the law and the, my old self and the old operation, then I'm on to, after that is the judgment. Then if I die to it, I can separate and detach myself from it. But if I don't ever die to it, it's, it's attached to me. Oh my God. You can't tell the difference in us. So if I, if I go ahead and die in my mind, in my consciousness to that world that allowed me to have this worldly tabernacle, if I die to it, then I'd be able to judge it and know what it is and detach from it. I won't spend as much time fighting with it. See, y'all don't want the cross because you think the cross is a, is, is, is a bad place. But what I'm telling you is what Christ did on that cross, he says, I'm telling you, you can do this. Why? Because you, now you have a knowledge, you have another knowledge in the New Testament that says you can do it and how to get it done. So if, if you will just go ahead and die already, if you because here's the thing, if, 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 if death is on something, if, if a, a dead body is on something, even if it's healthy, the dead body going to cause it to decay. Why? Because it kills, death kills everything around it. So if you detach from it, and if you judge it correctly and say, this has caused me to live in a place of death that kept me asleep, you, and you're going to know it, you're going to give it up. If, if you really believe what I'm telling, what I'm teaching y'all. So judgment means you're free from the thoughts that held us captive, captive in our mind, abound to the out of the physical world for us search. He says, if, if, if you'll free yourself from it, then you'll come looking for me. If you free yourself from it, then you'll come looking for me. Because verse 28 says what? Christ was offered once and, 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 uh, to bear sins, and then, um, and then he says, and to them that look for me. Where am, I look Where am I looking for him for? Where am I looking for him at? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because uh, Amar struck a nerve with me when he said, fix my mind. Fix my, fix my thoughts, fix my, fix my heart. He didn't come to God by, y'all, did y'all hear him? He didn't come to God talking about get feet, do my, pay my light bill, pay my rent, uh, 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 make him do right, make her do right, uh, make them do, treat me right on the job. No, he said, no, 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 it's all me, it's me. I, I need fixing because if I'm fixed, I'm going to see my view, gonna, oh, it's going to come from a heavenly place, and I'm going to be able to see God's view, what God sees, and I'm going to know I don't have no attacks against me. Ain't nothing against me. The reason why you thinking you are being attacked is because you still attached to yourself. Yeah. So here's the pattern. Say pattern. For this reason, Christ was offered once for our sin, our error thinking. What was the sin? My worldly sanctuary. My mindset, my thoughts form through the belief in the reality of external, the outer appearance of God. I don't say it this one time, the belief that we are separated and we'll see him when we die. And can I I'm plug right there and then I'm going to end this thing. Because most of the time, here's the thing. People are not the same as they are in church. So it's not that because you're on a repeated cycle, if you're still functioning in the old, old covenant, then you're on a repeated cycle. And so all you keep saying is, God, forgive me. But you'll come before people and ask St. Timonius. Why? Because it looked like that's a figure. It looked like you you looking like that you are part of a group. And then you know not to tell them because why? You in front of them, you walk in the white line. But when nobody else is looking, what are you really thinking about? Where are you really going? What are you really saying? Come on here, somebody. Yeah. I'm going to act like it in front of y'all. Well, if, if for what? Like y'all got the key. Well, some of them think they got the keys to hell. And, and they, they, some of them think God done put them on duty now. It's like, you, you were curved when I was curved and he put you in charge of It is very important to know, it's very important to know you need to look for me. Christ entered into heaven itself, not to appear in the presence of God. 
And this is what I want to say to you, John 14. There is plenty of room for you in my father's house. Yeah. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you? And if I'm on my way to get a room ready for you, I'll come back again so that you can, can live where I live. I done told you I came. I'm, Christ is coming. Could Jesus come twice? One to bear sins. The second time is, is for salvation, for your transformation. So, so 2 Corinthians 13, 5 through 9 says this. Examine yourselves, whether you be in faith. Prove your own self. Know ye not your own self. Do you know yourself? How that, Je how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobate. So, 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 so is that what's really going on? That's the scripture now. That's the, he, he says, examine yourself. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5 through 9, talks about examining yourself, uh, whether you be of faith. Prove yourself. Ain't nobody going in there for you, I, except, for the one, except for the ones that's giving the $1.7 million in a night because y'all think if y'all give $10,000 that uh, you're going to have this special anointing. When Christ is in you, everybody is anointed. Everybody have the anointing. The anointing is simply the ability to get it done. Uh-huh, but y'all keep letting them go back there in that tent and pull it in there. They back there sprinkling a little something, something on stone. That's the reason why you can't change. That's a, that's a drug addict. I'm going I'm to give you the first one free, and then that one right there going to get you hooked, and then you're going to what? You're going to keep coming back, bringing me your money, bringing me your money. I'm, I got a special anointing. I got a special. Let me wipe my sweat. That, anybody want to buy this for $10,000 because I put sweat on it? You buying these clocks, these watches. You buying all these figures. All the angels. <laughs> you better check yourself. And I keep you. That's the reason why folks stay away. Why? Because I, if I hype you up, I sound good and don't let me be able to sing. Oh, that's the anointing. That's oil right there. But your life ain't changing. I mean, I'm pulling up, eating and dressing and driving like I want to. And you think that's the end goal. But the end goal is your mind. The end goal, they should be telling you, you got to renew your mind. Be ye transformed. Because in the scripture says, chapter 12, be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. So what? You'll know the will of God. You'll prove the will of God. You'll know what God is doing. So I ain't got to die to do it. Yeah. Present your body a living sacrifice. Give him the sanctuary. Stop all this plan. Now examine yourself. We ain't talking about judgment or condemnation. We're talking about removal. We're talking about dying to move forward. Examine yourself, whether you be in faith. Is that God talking to you? Or is that, is that big mama reminding you you ain't no good? We, we were here. Our women, we were raised by women in our family. My grandmother, my mama, my aunts. And I really didn't see a really healthy relationship with a male. So, so them women were headstrong. And, and, and they taught me. I followed the pattern because that's the house I come up in, headstrong. But I found out some when I started dealing with a man. No, don't no man want no woman's that the hair there is bigger than him? You lose your softness. You, you, you want to run everything. Shoot, my husband told me he wasn't trying to sleep with his mama. I'll get, I, I'm telling you, I'm going to drink some water, I'm finna end it. I'm going to look at you because I know you love me. Y'all, we, that's the, examine yourself. Look at, look at where you are, know yourself. We too busy knowing everybody else. All that gossip on social media and all that, all that other stuff going, ain't nothing healthy about that stuff. They, they have us for a dollar. We fighting, we naked, and we just fight. That's all you hear. We fighting each other as female. We fighting our man. Y'all don't see the pattern? Yeah. And, and we half naked, and we walking around, and he, he, people in Fisher are going to Walmart looking like the real house of Atlanta. That's all right. Examine yourselves, whether you be in faith. Prove your own selves. Know yourselves. 
Be your unique self. Find that likeness and image that I put on the inside of you. So Christ, the scripture says, Christ is either in you, except you be reprobate. You know him in you, or you reprobate. I, I didn't say that. That's 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. So look for the world, the government Christ is holding together. It may look like in the physical this is falling apart, but you just see on display what's in folks' head, yeah. what's in their heart. So when are we going to see what's on display? Are you showing something? Now? I just want you to know that now. But what's on display? What about that world on the inside of you that nobody can see? When y'all going to let that old in, that old cosmos, and come in alignment with some new stuff? Where's your newness? Where's your new ideas? Where's your new revelation? Where's your, your new insight? Where's your new road you're supposed to travel on? How long you got to be told there's a new road? How, how long you going to be told that there's a world on the inside of you before you do something about it? How long are you going to, how long? Because here's the thing. See, me telling you is going to cause situations and circumstances to come. And if you keep choosing my own role, your order of service, that's, those are indications that you have not been transformed by the renewing of your mind. You can recite this all day. That, no, 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 no. You still remember what happened in 1962, so you can remember it. But can you live it? See, that's where the rubber meet the road. When you come ask me something, you huffy. I'm going to get with you because you don't know who I am. No, I'm going to let you be huffy. But I get it too. On my job, just being out. But I'm like, no, because their response is their heart. My response is mine. You can say them folks don't, they cause me to, no, 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 baby, that's the indicator. You projecting. You got something in you you need to fix. So examine yourself. And so us living, it, living just our, our normal lives, doing the things that we do, start looking for opportunities and say, oh, and if you fall, if you don't do it just right, at least give yourself a, a grade that you need to give and say, oh, I got an F right there and I need to, uh, I need to, I, I need to change that thought. So what you do is forget them because they, they can be want, want, want. Check what's, what's coming up in you. Because you can't change them. But you can check your thoughts. And like, oh, okay, let me fix. Okay, let me work on that. This ain't over with. I'm going to tell y'all the rest of this next week. We going, we, yeah. Uh-huh. So I, I put down here for my notes. I'll tell you why this rock next week. Why this rock was taken. It says it in the Bible. Y'all ready to end the world? Now that you know what it mean. Yeah. All that fear, them fear tactics and manipulation. Isn't, isn't it funny though? I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done. Isn't it funny how when you go back and I look at things that happened in slavery time and um, different patterns, you got to start looking for stuff, looking for stuff and, and how, it was how it was come about. But uh, isn't it funny how uh, the slave owners, they, they, they manipulated you and, and, and imparted fear in you to get you to do what you want to do, and now that's what we do to each other? Huh? You got you to gotta let your forefather go, baby. You, you have a father in heaven that he ain't going to manipulate you. He wants you, want your life to be an inspiring life. You inspire somebody, and you fully understand that what that they see God in you, and and they want the God in you. They don't want you. They see the God in you. So this begins with salvation, but it kind of looks like everybody everybody's at home. But we understand salvation is yeah you confessing, but that word confess there means that you are coming into agreement with the.